all right guys it's down wild man back here for another youtube video and today as you guys can see in the title we're going to be testing the xiaomi paco f4 gt is it still a good phone one year later right now for my subscribers i think some of y'all already known that basically a sub had gifted me this gaming phone like i said it's a xiaomi paco f4 gt and it's a crazy good gaming phone y'all so basically i was this this a, a real quick backstory on why he gifted me the gaming phone so as you can see this is my iphone right here i'm going to be using it as a hand cam right now for today's video right right now i have my laptop camera as the face cam so basically what i do right i go live every day on my channel playing cold d mobile and warzone mobile my iphone is an old iphone right so you know it lags a little bit sometimes it lags a lot and he's seen that so he decided you know what he had a gaming phone and he was like he doesn't even play the games anymore so why not give the gaming phone to me so i could be able to play the game smoothly and be on live stream playing the game smoothly right but we did encounter a problem so i can't actually connect the phone to my laptop to stream or use it as a hand cam or anything because the only down there's like there's only one downside i'm gonna tell you guys right now i'm beginning the video there's only one downside to getting the xiaomi paco f4 gt right so xiaomi apparently makes their phones with usb type c 2.0 which is old right not that old because it's still type c at the end of the day right but it's still old to the point where it can output hdmi but no one makes stuff anymore that uses usb c 2.0 right so for my iPhone, as you can see, it's just plugged in with a regular iPhone charger. Just a regular iPhone charger, right? iPhone XR, right? Regular iPhone charger into my laptop, right? And it comes up through OBS because iPhones are apparently made to output HDMI simply through a charging cord, right? Now, the most new Androids or most Androids usually have USB-C 2.0, so they can output HDMI. But this Xiaomi Paco F4 GT doesn't have USB-C 3.0, right? It has USB-C 2.0, so it can output HDMI, but you have to find the right adapters that's USB-C 2.0. Then you have to find the right capture card that's USB-C 2.0, right? Now, here's the thing with that, right? If I had a Windows laptop because I'm on a MacBook, I would be able to stream off the gaming phone, but I don't. I have a, I have a MacBook, right? So basically, all MacBooks use USB-C 3.0. The only capture card that could connect to my MacBook is the Elgato HD60S Plus. Or at least that's the lowest capture card that could connect to my MacBook. And that's the one you want to use to stream off of a phone. But that one uses USB-C 3.0. So even if I could get that and plug it into my laptop, I can't plug this into the capture card. But I'm able to plug it into the Elgato HD60S. Not the HD60S Plus. I'll be able to put this into the HD60S, right? Because HD60S is a 2.0 USB-C, right? But it's not compatible with my MacBook because it's such an old capture card. So we're stuck here. So let me move this hand camera quick. As you guys can see in the face cam, we have a donation goal here for the new iPad Mini 6. Because I have a MacBook, because it's so easy to connect my iPhone to the laptop with just a phone charger, I'm going to be saving up for an iPad Mini to use for my games. That way I could full-time use my phone as a hand cam right because right now i can't use it as a hand cam because this is the one i play all my games off of through obs but yeah let's get back to the phone and all the pros and cons right so like i said again this is the xiaomi paco f4 gt right now this phone pretty powerful phone right we're gonna switch the scene here with the hand cam pretty powerful phone so let's show the hand cam boom all right this is the phone right here right so again, the Xiaomi Paco F4 GT, it comes with like a, I think it's a 68 megapixel um, camera. So it has a pretty good camera. Okay, that's gallery. Where's the camera button? See, I'm not an Android user. Again, I can't, it's not connected to OBS. I can't exactly show you guys the camera quality, right? So it comes with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, which is a pretty powerful chip, right? Like, I, I yo. It also comes with a 120 hertz display. So if I also go to settings, we can go to display and it has refresh rate and you could choose the default one, which is adjust the refresh rate dynamically. 
or you can use a custom one and put it set onto 120 hertz or 60 hertz i have mine on 120 hertz right so the yeah, overall it's a pretty good font i think you guys already seen many reviews on it so i'm not going to go into too much detail you know it has rgb lights on the back camera right here you guys can't see it but whenever i get a notification or i plug it into charge a light comes up here um, I think if you go into Game Turbo, let me unlock the phone. It is unlocked. I think you have to open. It has pop-up triggers also because it's a gaming phone. So you could use that to like map it onto like certain keys in the games. It says configure pop-up triggers. I don't use them because I use four finger claw on COD and I'm too used to it. I tried using the triggers, but again, it's not my style, right? Overall, is this still a good gaming phone, right? Is this still a good gaming phone? <laughs> One year later, so let's find out, right? So we got a couple games downloaded on here. We have Warzone Mobile. We have Real Driving School. We have Call of Duty Mobile. We have Dragon Ball Legends and we have Driving Zone. Today, we're only gonna test Real Driving School, Call of Duty Mobile, and Warzone Mobile. Now here's the thing, right? So Real Driving School on Max Graphics actually heats up this phone super hot. We have it on ultra for graphics, we have bloom on, we have resolution high, we have 120 frames per second, right? We're gonna go into free play. We're gonna go into free play. And this, yo, it's smooth. It is smooth, bruh. I think overall this phone is pretty good one year later. Honestly, the hand cam can't pick it up properly. I wish I was able to plug the phone to OBS, that way you guys could actually see gameplay. And hear audio but let's see um what was i gonna do all right we have first person i said it's pretty smooth yo turn on the lights yeah i tell you the graphics on this game is pretty good turn on the engine it has pretty good it has also stereo speakers i forgot to mention that now that i remember we have one do you have two stereo speakers right here then we have another two on this side of the phone. If I was to turn the volume, this thing could get very loud. It has Dolby Atmos and everything. But overall, this, this is pretty smooth on the gaming phone. No lag at all. Matter of fact, also, we could turn on FPS settings, right? For the game. If you guys were to look closely, the camera would focus about here. 85, 89, 93 frames per second, 95. So it's not exactly hitting 120. It says 101, 117. 117 seems to be the highest we're getting, right? Which isn't bad. So yeah, if it says it right here too, minimum frames per second is 57, max is 117. I don't know if the camera could pick that up for you guys. But yeah, that's on max graphics. The phone isn't that hot right now, but here's why, here's how it's gonna get hotter, right? So this phone comes with gaming game turbo since it's a gaming phone. So I would swipe from this side of the screen. And then boom, we have game turbo. Keep turning up the we turn down the volume. Because I don't want you guys to have double audio on the mic. So yeah, we have boost performance, which clears memory, free storage, monitor performance, right? We press boost and we automatically get 121 frames per second, right? And then you could clear memory again if you want to. Because this phone comes with eight gigabytes of ram i'm pretty sure but you could add another five which gives you 13 gigabytes of ram which i have right now with memory booster you see you could um do the pop-up triggers set it up you have voice changer you have dnd screenshot record settings brightness and everything a whole bunch of stuff right and with game booster on if you got you guys can't feel it obviously but i can feel it. the back of the phone here is very hot on this game only on real driving school i experience overheating problems with this phone like the game still runs super smooth obviously because it's boosting performance but the phone gets so hot playing this game especially if i was to for example go into multiplayer and join like a 50 player room sheesh this thing is scorching hot you could probably cook eggs on it but yeah on to the next game all right so let's go on to the next game so like i said we're only doing Real Giant School, Call of Duty Mobile, and Warzone Mobile. So let's go to Call of Duty Mobile, which is my personal favorite to play on this gaming phone. We're going to boost it one time. We're gonna boost the game off rip. Because there isn't really much to test on Real Driving School, right? I'm gonna press continue. 
gonna auto log in. Yeah, it's taking a minute. It's taking a minute to get inside of here. And boom, all right, so we're gonna go to graphics. That's the first thing we wanna test, all right? So, right now we're on max graphics and high frame rate, which means 60 frames per second, but this game phone comes with ultra setting, which would give you about 90 frames per second. So I could turn it on ultra. The thing about ultra is that it's only gonna keep it on low graphics, all right? Which you don't really want. I mean, if you want to, you want to, but today we're gonna test it on the highest graphics settings, which means we could go to very high and max frame rate, which is 60 frames per second, all right? We're gonna back out of here. We're gonna go to Battle Royale. And we're gonna go, okay, that's where you're gonna have third person and everything. We're gonna go to Training Ground. And we're gonna hop into a match. You guys can see the graphics for yourself. I think it's pretty smooth. So this is, again, this is 60 frames per second, all right? 60 frames per second. I don't know, the game is even boosted also. So we're getting about 90 to 112 frames per second off of boosting it. Again, the camera won't really pick it up properly. <laughs> but yeah, this thing is super smooth, yeah. Thing is super smooth. This is on a max graphics, yeah. Max graphics. And I don't have I have I don't have any lag at all. No lag at all. And this is max graphics. Let's go to first person. Um let's use a gun that has let's see exactly this is a mythic gun i have mythic doq and we're gonna do a weapon inspection of it so you guys can see it i don't okay i don't know why we we're running but hey this thing is smooth yo crisp crisp no lag at all no lag at all and this is what the Xiaomi paco f4 gt does a year later. A year later, y'all. Which is absolutely insane. All right, so we're gonna go on to the next game, which should be Warzone Mobile, because we're not gonna spend too long testing this. All right, so for Warzone Mobile, for you guys that don't know how to get it early, right? What you have to do on Android, you need to get this Australian VPN. Let me put it into the face hand cam. Australia VPN, right? And you need to turn that on, right? Once you turn that on, after you download it from the Play Store, you're going to have to go to the Play Store, right? You wanna go to App Info, and you wanna clear all data, everything, clear it all. And then open back the app store once you have the VPN turned on and just search up Warzone Mobile, right? Now, if it doesn't come up, if you search Warzone Mobile and it doesn't come up, then keep the VPN on, right? And keep the app store open. And you're gonna open, you're gonna go create a new Google account while you have the VPN on. And once you create that account and sign to the Play Store with it, you should be able to get Warzone Mobile. But that's not it. The next app you have to download from the Play Store after you download Warzone Mobile, is gear up vpn booster gear up booster that way you could have a vpn to enter into the game right so you're gonna open gear up right you're gonna find warzone mobile once you download it you're gonna press boost right and it's gonna boost the game for you you could choose a server i personally choose europe because i live closer to europe i'm in america and it's gonna auto open the game on android right so we're gonna test the graphics here now here's the thing i'm gonna warn you guys or something on android right warzone mobile on my iphone which even though it's the older iphone looks way better on here on the iphone compared to the android for some reason warzone mobile has not on android this doesn't look as great compared to apple for some reason i don't know what warzone mobile has been doing all right so here's a tip here's a trick i'm going to tell some of you guys all right once you log into the game because you only need the vpn to log in right you could turn off the vpn in my case i could just press boost and it's going to close all backgrounds apps and the VPN will turn off on Android, on the gaming phone. We're gonna go to settings, graphics. We have it on literally the highest graphics, but for some reason, we just can't get any, um, can't get any high graphics on Android. So now if I've done that, with the VPN off, I get 105 ping, 118 MS, right? 
when I have the VPN on, I get 160 MS to 200. It basically means it's going to be lagging out over time. So this is very good ping. I don't lag out on this ping. It's very good ping for right now. Obviously, in a month, this game is going to globally release. And you guys don't need a VPN. And your ping should be around like 20 to 30, sometimes 50 to 80, depending on what your Wi-Fi is. I have fiber optic Wi-Fi, so my ping is usually about 12 to 25 when I'm playing Call of Duty Mobile. So I can't wait for this thing to release globally so I can have 10 to 25 ping on Warzone Mobile. So we're going to choose our loadout. And you see, the game looks pretty good on camera. But I'm telling you, it looks way better on, on iOS. Right, it looks way see it looks way better on ios this guy was camping the game don't get me wrong though the game is smooth it's just the graphics that's the problem it's just the graphics that's the problem where are these people at i can't find nobody Can't find nobody. Where are these people at, boy? They hiding. They are hiding. Look at one right here. Oh shoot! Who killed me? Oh, he was a sniper camping. Nice. There's someone here behind us. Ah, see, I, I'm trying. I don't play Warzone Mobile on multiplayer. And there's a lot more sweats on multiplayer grinding camos. I realize a lot of sweats on multiplayer grinding camos. Look at that. See, I suck. I suck at this game. Oh, she was execute this guy. Let's execute him. What? His teammate saved him. His teammate was there. I didn't see that. Wow. I thought I was going to get a W execution. This guy came out of nowhere. Okay, and they had a bomb. A Claymore. But yeah, that's really it for Warzone Mobile, yo. I will go into some BR, but that's going to take forever. And that's really it for the video, y'all. We had the Pac Xiaomi Paco F4 GT. Pretty good phone to still use a year later. I mean, I think any phone that's a year old should, should be pretty good to use for gaming. Especially if it's labeled as a gaming phone. But yeah, switch the scene back to my face. And yeah, that's it for the Xiaomi Paco F4 GT. Overall, if you guys want the phone, keep in mind that you can't connect it into your laptop. Because it won't connect to the, to the capture cards. So you won't be able to plug into OBS or anything. But if you are not a streamer like I am, like I'm a streamer, but if you're not a streamer, you should get the phone for just casual gaming use. Not casual, extreme gaming use, but you just won't be able to put it on YouTube. There's screen recorders though, so you can screen record it. Me personally, I love OBS. And I would rather use OBS, which is exactly why I'm still on the iPhone playing games on live stream. Right now I have it as a hand cam, but I could turn it right back into a video cap. I could turn it right back to show on my screen. As you can see in the bottom left corner, it actually shows that it's saying my phone's connected to the screen. That's my actually my iPhone screen down there. I made it small and put it into that box. But yeah, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, y'all. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Peace.